I'm Will, and welcome, welcome to Kids Cooking for Kids. Today, we're going to make a breakfast smoothie. Today, we're going to do give you a tip on how to cut a bagel. You guys like bagels? Oh, yeah. Bagels bagel. are big. Well, today, we're going to make scrambled eggs. Welcome to our show. It's all about kids cooking and having fun. Help! <laughs> and then you help them out with pot. Smell that? You guys, do you smell anything? I smell mine. See, I don't smell anything. Mine smells smell Hey, hey, no double dipping. Wash, wash, wash. Many people ask us, why a kid's cooking show? The reason we do the show is because we love to eat and we enjoy cooking a lot. We started helping mom in the kitchen when we were about five years old. Like many kids, we helped her bake cookies. But we became more adventurous and branched out to other areas of cooking. But mostly, we were getting hungrier. Let's check in with Brian, our resident professional. He's going to teach us how to choose high quality foods. Today we're going to talk about fruit. Do you guys know the difference between these two melons? Yes. Which one's this? That's a honeydew. Honeydew. And that's a kennel. Okay, do you know what the, what the flush, the colors of the flush, they call it the flush of the melon is in a honeydew? Uh, it's kind of like cream. Kind of, a, kind of a, almost a green color. Green. But when you're shopping for a cantaloupe, let's hold these. And let's kind of feel it. How do yours feel? Mine feels kind of bumpy. This one's got some bumps in it. Okay. Mine feels pretty smooth. Okay. A little bump. Let me see yours. Yeah. That's a little hard. I like them to have a little baby gift to them. Okay. I, al I always smell. You can actually get, get a little smell. Yeah. Of it. It's kind of coming through. You get that kind of tropical. Kind mm -hmm. of tropical smell and a little bit of a little bit of give to it but you don't want any bumps any uh, cavities okay all right and what about buying apples if you guys are gonna would I you like would you buy that apple or not I would buy this apple you would, would and what's apple. good about it well I like that it's got a nice texture to it and okay. it's also nice and hard okay so I like just like I wouldn't I wouldn't buy this one because it's got a lot of just because I usually think of an apple as smooth kind okay. of this has a lot of waves in it almost. okay let's see, let's see. Yeah, those are natural. Yeah, those are natural. I hear you loud and clear. This one's kind of more of a rounder, smoother. Really, really on an apple, you just, you don't want to see any bruises, mm -hmm. okay? You don't want to see any bruises, and uh, it should look nice and vibrant in color. These look, these have got nice color to them, and I don't have any bruises on them, and you're kind of thinking about the ridges. Mm -hmm. That's cool. Uh, but I think you got a pretty piece of apple there. What about bananas? How do you guys like to eat your bananas? I like them with just like, Really yellow, no, not a lot of brown. Okay. Uh, nice and yellow. Yeah, nice maybe and even yellow. a little bit of green. How, what about a pineapple? I should grab a pineapple. You guys like pineapples? Yes. yes. Okay. Well, what do you think we're gonna look for here? Well, mine's got a great smell. Can you smell that? Yes. Do you smell anything? I smell mine. See, I don't See? smell. Mine yeah. smells. Mine smells really good. What about mine? That's really fragrant. Yeah. So this is really fragrant. So I like I like to pick them up. I like to smell them. I smell I smell pineapple juice right now. I can smell it, but I still have a firm pineapple. Pick them up, look at them, smell them, ask questions, make decisions because you guys are picking out your produce and your and your fruit. And what are you doing? You're putting that stuff in your body. Mm -hmm. All right. So these decisions about the meat and the fish and the produce and the cheese and the and, and the fresh fruit is all about what you guys are putting in your body as far as making your body healthy. So it's really really important. Farmers markets are great. They're a good place to find local foods and you get to meet some really nice people too. You know, in the old days in Santa Maria, they grew a variety called Chandler. And that was a delicious variety. Then you began to watering county. You get to taste things too. And that's not something you can normally do at the grocery store. All right, let's go. 
we're going to join our friend Brian and get some insider tips for the kitchen. Today we're going to do give you a tip on how to cut a bagel. You guys like bagels? Oh yeah. Bagels Bingo. are big. Bagels are big, right? Big bagels. in the morning. Looks like a simple thing to do, but there's a real safety issue here because you're going to cut it with a knife, right? So how do you want to cut it? Don't cut it, but show me how you want to cut it. Let me see what you do. Ooh, boy, he's in trouble. He's in order. Let me see how you want to do it. How do you want it? Same way? Well, not really. I just, okay. I like to cut him like this. Mm, trouble. Both you guys are in trouble. Oh, you're going to get a bread knife. Okay, give me a bread knife. Okay, well, now you're in less trouble. Okay, here's the way you were doing it, right? Yeah. And here's the way you were doing it, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so, and here's the way I'm going to do it. I'm going to put my hand up here. I'm going to put the knife here. And the first thing I'm doing right now is I'm guaranteeing myself I can't cut myself. Why? Where, what would happen right now if the knife went through? It, it would come out over right here. Yeah. Okay? I start it like that. I pick it up. I hold it here. And again, there's no way I can cut myself. And so I cut down like that. And I cut it in half. One thing you never want to do with a knife is you never want to cut the knife with the pressure going towards your hand. hand. Take the bagel. Put your hand on the top cut like this, it cuts right through to a certain point, then you get stuck, so then you can pick it up, and again, hands out here, finish the cut, and go all the way through. How about that? Very, cool. very cool. Better? Oh yeah. All right. Remember, if you need help with anything in the kitchen, don't just go out and allege and do it. Ask your mom or dad for help. So if you can't like the stove, you don't know how to, then just, you know, ask them for help. They'll come and help, you know, with whatever you need to do. So say if you have like a big pot and your brother's over here struggling with it, he says, help, <laughs> and then you help him out with the pot. When in doubt, wash, wash, wash. Okay, if you don't understand uh, something in the recipe, uh, you know, that seems like it could be very extremely important, even if it's not that important, ask your uh, mom or dad or aunt or uncle or grandma or grandpa or stepfather um, for help. So if you don't understand why we have to add basil nuts to the Hyperflagenschneigen, then ask your mom or dad or stepfather or grandmother or grandfather for help. We'll be right back and we'll finally get to some cooking. Welcome back. Let's get cooking. Today, we're gonna make a breakfast smoothie where you just want to scavenge and hunt throughout the refrigerator and the whole kitchen. And turned up some fresh strawberries, a banana, and some yogurt, some yogurt. Now, we also found some frozen berries. Ooh, that's up. That's gonna be good. Mixed berries, that is. Looks good. So now that we have all our ingredients, we need to measure them out. So it's time for an inchy weensy bit of, of math. math. We're gonna take one cup of strawberries, and half a cup of mixed berries. That's about half a cup there, I'd say. Did you say that's good? Yeah, I'd say that's good. Right. Add a few more. Right. Okay, so now it's gonna get a little messy. It's always a line. So now that we have all our berries measured, we're gonna take them and Drop them into here, like so. <clears throat> into a dish ink. Now that we're done with the berries, I'm gonna put these back in the freezer. And we're gonna put the strawberries back in the fridge, or my lovely assistant here will do it. Oh. So now, we need to cut up the banana. Wait a the banana. Cut off the ends. Voila! So now that we have to cut a banana, we shall 
throw it into the sink shell. Gotta wash your hands a lot. Now I can use bananas, so you know, just rub it on your... Eee, there you go. Take yogurt. You're gonna need a spoon to kind of scoop it out of there. I'm just gonna take a spoon. Add the yogurt. And while he's doing that, I'm gonna come over here, and we also are gonna need a quarter of a cup of orange juice. And put the OJ in the mix here. You can use really any type of yogurt. And you may use uh, a vanilla, is what I usually use, but we only have peach yogurt. Now, we are going to blend it all together. Make sure you have secured the lid. You don't want a smoothie flying everywhere. So you want it to start it on a slow speed and then build it up so you can get all those berries nice and liquefied and you have it all smooth and like a smoothie. Got to take a wooden spoon and Go in there and make sure there are no berries in there or solid parts. By the looks of it, it looks good. Cheers, cheers. We're going to join our friend Brian and get some insider tips for the kitchen. Grab a hold of the onion and show me how you would cut that if you were going to cut like pieces, like slices, like how are you going to hold it regularly? Okay, okay. And is that, where you're gonna, is that how you're going to put your fingers on there? Let me see you do that again. Okay. All right, well, let me show you a different way. What you're doing right now is you're putting your fingers on here like this, okay? So when you go to cut, if you're not careful, what you're going to do is you're going to actually cut your finger, which is what we don't want you to do. So the first thing to know is that you want to take your fingers, your fingertips, and you tuck them under. Mm -hmm. And then what you do is as you slice, you've created this little measure here. Because if I measure here, like either you're slicing really thin. So if I'm going to go down like this, See, I can just, I just keep, see, I just keep moving that back. I don't have to worry about cutting my fingers because this is my measure going back and it's also my protector, all right? Mm. And what I'm not doing is I'm not keeping my fingers out like you did because I have no control and then I might accidentally cut here. So the whole thing to know is fingers down here, kind of let your little fingernails grab a hold of the onion, tuck out like that so they're completely protected. There's no way you can cut them. And then you actually, you actually have your knife resting against your knuckles. All right, this way you can keep all your fingers. Exactly. Yay. Hi, I'm Michael, I'm Will, and we're here at the San Francisco Food Bank. So today, this is our warehouse, and as you can see, it's a huge warehouse. It's 55,000 square feet. And what we do here is we collect food from all different sources, growers, shippers, uh, the Department of Agriculture, individuals like you when you donate at the holidays for food drives, as well as the retail industry. And we bring that food into our warehouse, volunteers help us collect it, distribute it, and we take it out to the community, to people in need. We want you to get involved and help stop hunger in your community. Find out if there is a food bank in your local area and volunteer to organize a food drive. Ask your parents and teachers to help or contact us and we will help you get the information you need. There are nearly 13 million children in America who go hungry every day. They need our help. This is a problem kids can help solve. Please join us and let's make sure no child goes hungry. Don't go away. We'll be right back with more kids cooking. Welcome back. We've still got lots to do. Well, today on Breakfast in Kids Cooking for Kids, we are going to make scrambled eggs. Since we have three people today to serve, we're gonna use six eggs. There's no piece of egg in there.
Well, I finished uh, putting all the eggs into the bowl. Um, and one thing I'd like to mention about uh, handling raw eggs is that you're bound to get uh, that egg white uh, on your hands. Egg goop. So every time you handle eggs, after you're done cracking all of them, wash your hands. I just did. Um, and then you can begin doing whatever you're going to do. So first, we're going to add some milk. Now you just want to make it so it's just filled up in between the creases, like that. So now we're going to go over here, grab our kosher salt and our pepper. Give about a pinch of that. Generously spread it on. A couple grinds of pepper. And then we mix it up. Take our whisks, break the yolks, make sure everything's starting to mix up. There we go. Let that drip off. Throw that in a sink. And there we have it. While Michael's been working on the eggs, I've been getting a little something right here. So now I'm going to get myself a knife. Use this type of knife. As a reminder, always have parents around when you're using knives and be very careful. What you want to do is I like to trim off all the fat from the pieces. You can leave a little fat on because it's, it's good for taste, but you don't want to leave a lot of fat on because it's not very good for you. Now I've got all the fat trimmed off, so I'm going to cut them into little cubes. While William's working on the ham, I'm going to start on the eggs. Put it on high heat and start heating it up. Actually, I'm going to put it on the So, anyway, I'm going to go over here and get some ham. You can also use butter. And... Now I've gotten all the ham ready, and what I did was, after I'd done chopping it, I used one of these, I just call it like a scraper, scooper. You take your ham, get it all kind of out over the place, kind of get it in there, scoop it, put it in there. All right, William, you ready with the ham? I'm ready with the ham. All right, let's get it in there. Just pour it all in there, buddy. There you go. Don't be afraid of the eggs. Alright, so we'll just take the eggs, put them on each plate. Here we have it. Scrambled eggs and ham for breakfast at Kids Cooking for Kids. Let's get out of the kitchen. Good nutrition and lots of exercise is very important. It's important to get out and get at least a half an hour of exercise every day. Let's see what's coming up next week on Kids Cooking for Kids. Today we're going to be making fresh tomato salsa. You can tell a good tomato if it's nice and firm, not really squishy. I love produce because I love vegetables. You guys like vegetables? Yes. Mm -hmm. Good. Today we are making fresh homemade tomato soup. Working for all day. Mmm.
Oh, that's good. Today we're going to talk about mise en place. Mise en place is a French term. It means to have everything in its place. <laughs> really like to eat, cook. eat and cook. Never lean against the stove after you've done cooking. You're done cooking with it because I keep stuttering. And one little thing I want to mention about. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Did you say <laughs> All right, stand by. Stand by. Settle down. We became more adventurous and adventurous. Adventurous. <laughs> we'll look that up. Be sure and visit our website for recipes from our show. There's information on how to contact us with questions. We've got web links to help you find information on how to help hungry children.